Boxo encounters a bear in front of the inn. Lamis goes out to greet Boxo and also greets the bear. It turns out the bear is the chairman of the Hunter Association. The bear speaks to them, stating that there will soon be a mission to attack the frog monster. Stronghold and he wants Lamis and Boxo to join. Lamis is surprised because Boxo cannot fight. However, the chairman bear explains that he only wants Boxo to provide food and drinks during the journey and assures their safety. Boxo himself doesn't want the frog monsters to cause trouble in the city. So he agrees to join the mission. It has been three days since their journey to the frog monster stronghold. According to the information from the chairman bear, the safety of the village is important, but the most crucial thing is for the village to maintain control over the teleportation circle. The teleportation circle is a magical device that allows someone to travel back and forth between dungeon layers and the surface. During the mating season, frog monsters can become very troublesome as they lay numerous eggs, resulting in the rapid growth of adult frogs. During the journey, someone mentioned that there were more frogs this year compared to previous years, as seen by the increased number of hunters participating. In the late afternoon, they set up tents to rest. A red-haired man approaches Lamis and Boxo. He appears to be one of their guards. The man approaches out of curiosity about Boxo. Lamis suggests that he try buying one of the products available. The man chooses to buy lemon tea. He is impressed because he has never seen packaging like that before. When he drinks it, he becomes even more impressed because it is warm. The man becomes curious about how to refill all these products. However, even Lamis herself doesn't know. All the products appear on their own without needing to be refilled. The man becomes more interested in Boxo and calls one of his companions, Philmina. Philmina refers to the man as Captain Cariel. It turns out that the eccentric bearded man is the leader of the guard group. According to Cariel, Philmina knows enough about magical tools and ancient treasures, so he asks if Philmina knows something about Boxo. After carefully examining Boxo, Philmina doesn't sense any magical power within him. Cariel doubts it because Boxo can produce items without anyone refilling them. It means that all the items inside him are transferred or stored in another space. According to Philmina, that is usually the case, but there are also blessings that don't require magical power. However, Philmina responds that Boxo cannot use blessings. Unfortunately, she is mistaken. Boxo can use blessings. The sun was almost setting, and it was time for them to rest after setting up the tents and other preparations. To welcome this mission, Boxo had added a new product. The mornings and evenings were very cold, so Boxo decided to include instant noodles in their supplies. The hunters lined up eagerly to buy the instant noodles. Boxo noticed a little girl with white hair who had a big appetite. It seemed that she was one of their guards, along with Lamis. The girl's name was Shu. In the evening, Director Bear approached Lamis and Shu, who were chatting. He wanted to discuss the journey for the next day. It would take approximately three hours for them to reach the frog monster's nest. Since Lamis and Boxo's purpose was only to provide food, Director Bear asked if they wanted to join the battlefield or not. Lamis herself was a hunter, so she didn't mind fighting. However, Shu was concerned about Boxo. To her surprise, Boxo also wanted to join the battlefield. After all, Boxo wanted to protect Lamis. She was his first customer and friend in this world. The next day, they continued their journey. They arrived at a misty and muddy part of the forest. Director Bear then heard the sound of a frog monster horde ahead and ordered the hunters to attack. They were excited because they would receive extra payment for each defeated frog. Lamis also seemed enthusiastic. However, Boxo was somewhat worried because Lamis wasn't familiar with her opponents. When a frog monster approached her, somehow Lamis managed to hit it accurately. It seemed that she became more balanced when carrying Boxo. Although indirectly, Boxo was glad to be able to assist her. After defeating so many frog monsters, there were still some that kept emerging. It was unusual for them to appear in such numbers. Lamis had a hunch that something was amiss. He ordered the other hunters to gather in the middle and not act alone. 
That way, they could continue to attack while defending themselves. Suddenly, a frog monster ambushed Shu from behind, and Lamis tried to protect her but seemed unable to. It was at that moment that Boxo used his protective magic and sent the frog monster flying. Shu thought that Lamis had cast the protection spell. However, Lamis didn't feel like she was using magic, which meant Boxo was the one responsible. Boxo felt that he needed to expand his field of vision to be more helpful. He didn't mind using 1000 points for that function. Then, Lamis asked Boxo to let her know if there was an enemy approaching from behind. Boxo would say you might get a reward as a signal. In the midst of the battle, Kirill was impressed by Lamis' strength and agility in evading attacks. He even felt embarrassed and didn't listen to Boxo's warning about an enemy from behind. Reluctantly, Boxo had to use his protective magic once again. Kirill was even more surprised to see Lamis producing the protective shield. However, she denied it and stated that it was Boxo's power. Boxo sensed ill intentions in Kirill's mind, considering him a potential threat. After some time, the frog monsters in that area were finally defeated. To receive payment, they had to cut off the tongues of the frog monsters. Kirill only instructed his members to do it and didn't do anything himself. Of course, his members protested. They said that Kirill became their captain because he could order them to do disgusting things like that. For now, Kirill felt that their payment was sufficient after defeating so many. But if they wanted more, they had to go to the front lines. Philmina reminded Kirill that their task was to protect Lamis and Boxo. Philmina would agree if Lamis and Boxo agreed as well. Upon hearing this, Kirill tried to persuade Lamis to go to the front lines. Lamis was willing to help if the troops on the front lines encountered any problems. After they fought on the front lines, some hunters were injured. Lamis carried them one by one to be taken to the cart, and Boxo helped by providing them with free isotonic drinks. Director Bear thanked them because the Foolish People's Troop had also helped on the front lines. The Foolish People's Troop referred to Kirill's group, although no one knew why it had that name. Director Bear didn't expect the number of frog monsters to be greater than anticipated. Director Bear and Kirill came to the conclusion that the evil frog king might have risen. If that were the case, the assistance of the Foolish People's Troop would be very useful. Director Bear also asked Lamis and Boxo to stay there and provide food for the injured hunters. At night, Boxo was alone because Lamis was still busy assisting the injured hunters. Then, someone tried to steal coins from inside Boxo. Boxo made a sound startling the thief. Boxo then dispensed bottled water for free. When the thief tried to take it, Boxo immediately dispensed hot corn soup, causing the thief's hand to burn. Fortunately, Lamis had returned by them. She threatened the thief not to mess with Boxo. Some time later, the guard saw a flock of scared crows flying. And indeed, the evil frog king was approaching them. Lamis took Boxo and hurriedly left the scene. The forest pigs that were pulling the cart refused to move out of fear. Feeling sorry for them, Lamis set the forest pigs free. Other hunters protested against Lamis's actions. As a result, Lamis was willing to pull the cart on her own with her own strength. Boxo was confused about what to do. As he looked at the list of products that could be added, an idea came to his mind that might hinder the evil frog king. Boxo replaced all the products inside him with cola. Lamis and the other hunters took the cola without knowing Boxo's intentions. After that, Boxo used his new function, the ability to transform. He transformed from a regular vending machine to a vending machine selling Mentos. Lamis still didn't understand what to do with the two items. With limited communication, Boxo could only give instructions with the voice command, please insert the coin. Lamis mistakenly thought that she needed to insert a coin even though the items had already been dispensed. In those critical moments, the tied-up thief woke up and panicked upon seeing the evil frog king. The other hunters silenced him with mentos, and he felt suffocated and asked for water. The hunters then poured cola into his mouth. They were surprised to see the cola bursting out of the thief's mouth. Because of that, Lamis understood what Boxo was trying to convey. The other hunters joined Lamis in helping. They put Mentos into the cola and aimed it at the evil frog king's eyes. 
In doing so, the evil Frog King was hindered, allowing the foolish people's troop and director Bear to chase after him. After a fierce battle, they managed to defeat the evil Frog King. The hunters thanked Boxo for his assistance. Director Bear apologized for allowing the hunters to be separated. Lamis also apologized, feeling that it was her fault. With this, their mission was completed, and they could return to the village.